Hello everyone. In distributed systems, we often encounter the terms proxy and reverse proxy. These terms can get confusing at times because they sound so similar. Today we will be discussing about what is a proxy in general, followed by the difference between the two types of proxies and their benefits. So let's get started. First of all, let's understand the term proxy. If we look for the meaning of word proxy, it means an entity that acts on behalf of someone or something. Let me explain it with a real life example. Some of us might have seen this in academic life, a friend putting a proxy in attendance for someone who is not in the class, which might not be the best thing to do, but we might have seen it. Interestingly, in distributed system, it's not much different either. The only difference here is that instead of a person, it's a software on a machine that makes requests on behalf of a client. So there are two types of proxy server, forward proxy and reverse proxy. Let's dive in detail to understand the difference between the two. The client on the left side is an end user who wants to access some content from YouTube. It sends a request to its proxy server, usually the internet service provider at times. It will take care of connecting to the YouTube server and getting the desired content back to the client on behalf of it. The YouTube server has no idea about the end user who actually requested and got the information from it. Now you might ask, what do we gain out of from, from this setup? So the first benefit of forward proxy is caching. The proxy server can cache any content which is not expected to change in its local memory. Let's learn it with an example. The client on the left side is requesting a request, uh, a, a video named video one from YouTube. The proxy server forwards the request to the YouTube server and returns the response back to the client. It caches this response in its local memory. Now, whenever another client sends a request for the same content, the proxy server can send back the cache response instead of contacting the server all over again. However, when a client requests a different video which is not cached before, the server will have to forward the request to YouTube to fetch the response and can cache it for future requests. So caching has advantages of low latency. As it doesn't have to contact the server, it can just get it from its local memory, which is pretty fast. Reduce network traffic because it doesn't have to do that extra hop and higher ben network bandwidth as it can accommodate more traffic. Another advantage is anonymity. In the case of forward proxy, the server doesn't know about the end client. As we can see in this example, in the from, um, when the client originally makes a request in the from its client to youtube.com, but when it reaches proxy server, the from changes from client to prof proxy server. And similarly, the same thing happens with the response. So it introduces the concept of um, the notion of anonymity here. Another big advantage is traffic control. So proxy servers can help in controlling the traffic as all the traffic goes through it. They can block certain content which might not be appropriate for certain reasons. For example, proxy servers in an organization can protect its employees' machines from certain malicious sites. It can also be used for geofencing. Another advantage is logging. So as all the traffic goes through a proxy server, it has the visibility through logs. These logs can be used for multiple purposes. For example, to identify any patterns or evaluate the need to enable caching for certain sites. Now let's jump into reverse proxy. In reverse proxy, the server hides the final destination server that served the traffic from the client. On the left side of the diagram, the client makes a request for YouTube content. It reaches the YouTube reverse proxy server, which gets the response back from one of the YouTube servers and sends the response back. In this case, the, the client will doesn't know about the final destination server, which is YouTube server in one in this case. So what do we gain from this setup? So the first benefit is caching. As we saw earlier in forward proxy setup, the reverse proxy server can also cache any non-changing data locally. 
Thus, when another client sends the request for the same content, it can serve it from its local cache instead of contacting the servers. This was provide the advantages of low network traffic, low latency, and reduced loads on the server. Another big advantage is anonymity. In the case of reverse proxy, uh, the client doesn't have a knowledge about the final destination YouTube server. In this case, YouTube server 1. This anonymity protects the destination server for potential attacks like DDoS attacks. One of the biggest advantage here for reverse proxy is load balancing. The reverse proxy can, can use any load balancing algorithm like round robin, resource space, etc. So the advantage of load balancing is that it can help in evenly distributing the traffic among the servers and which leads to increased reliability and availability. So for example, in this case, the video two return comes back from YouTube server two. Experimentation is also one interesting um, benefit that comes from reverse proxy. So a number of times when a new feature needs to be rolled out, it gets deployed in a canary fashion. And what, what's the advantage of this? So for example, let's try to understand it from an example. YouTube wants to test a new interface, but they're not sure if the customers would like it or not. So instead of releasing the new interface to all the customers, an experiment is launched, which means is that the new interface is visible to a certain percentage of users. So the decision whether to roll out interface two to all um, customers depends on the response of the customers who were shown interface two. Uh, in the uh, micro, micro architecture uh, world, in router, our ingress is a great advantage of reverse proxy. So in this case, the reverse proxy acts as a router in Kubernetes or microservices architecture. It can map to actual services running. For example, if a client requests playlists, it goes to server two. However, if the client is requesting for videos, it knows uh, that it, the server uh, one needs to serve this traffic. All in all, proxy and reverse proxy may sound similar, but they are pretty different in terms of use cases and benefits. Both of them add the element of anonymity. Forward proxy hides the identity of the client, whereas the reverse proxy conceals the identity of the server. So if you want to protect clients in your internal network, put them behind a forward proxy. On the other hand, if you intend to protect servers, put them behind a reverse proxy. If you're interested in similar concepts of system design, we have shared some great book links in the description below. Thanks for listening.